real. Because if that's real, it's very, very significant. Now, one possibility, of course, is that these are just some kind of illusions, maybe a trick of the mind. And so what we have done within the scientific community is to set up the world's largest ever study, which is looking at more than 30 medical centers around the world, both here in the UK, but also in the States and other countries in Europe, with some of the leading authorities in resuscitation, neuroscience, emergency medicine, to try to understand what really does happen when people have died, because it has implications for us all. Mm. And the study we've set up is called the AWARE study, and we're recruiting over 1,500 patients who've clinically died and been brought back to life again. And the only part, and the study is very broad, and we look at various aspects of resuscitation, but yes. the part that I think that's relevant to your show here is these claims that people have of being conscious when they've in fact died. And there's something in it. So what we do mm. is we don't know if these are real. We place some kind of image that is only visible from the ceiling and not from the ground up. So the theory being that if in the operating room we have 500 people who all come back and amazingly tell us these incredible stories, if this is just a trick of the mind, then none of them should be able to see those pictures. So if no one sees the pictures, we can conclude that it must be some kind of illusion. When will the results be out of this then? The results of the study should be out in about three to four years' time. And that's when you'll have to close your magazine, Wendy, well, when, we, <laughs> when know, we find out. I, I've, I've heard about this sort yeah. of research before from Peter Fenwick. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it sounds like a fascinating idea. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you've been trying for quite a while, haven't you? At least the, the early stages of it. And I don't think anybody's actually come back with a, an accurate description yet, is that right? The difficulty that we have with this area is, you imagine, people have died. And so in order to make the study the powerful enough to actually answer the question, it has to be big, which is why now we're trying, we piloted it to see if the method would work, which was Fr successful. Frankly, frankly, I have to say, if I were kind of in a state of clinical death with doctors working on me and my consciousness somehow managed to escape my body, and I would be pretty much focused on what they were doing, because, you know, I don't think I'd be looking around for pictures. <laughs> I'd be kind of, come on, get that working. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, you, you threw a medium, don't you? Shara, isn't it? Yeah. Good morning. You, you've spoken to people f on, on the other side, I mean, including your baby daughter. Yes. Yep. And that was um, through a medium that I'd never met before. It was on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, she first of all brought through um, a relative that had passed over, so there was a short reading on that. And then she told me that the relative was holding a daughter that would be about then, age three, yeah. that had passed at three months. She said the name of the child um, and then went on to other bits and pieces that I won't go into. But d definitively, yeah. that medium could not have known those details? Absolutely could not have known. No. And how, was, th was that, a, that must have been, if you believe it, and you do clearly, I mean, you can absolutely sincere in this, that must have been an extraordinarily powerful, well, emotional moment. You know, moment. I can say, as, um, and I think I speak for all parents that have lost a child, it mm. doesn't matter how much love and support you get, and I have a great um, sense of faith, um, counselling is wonderful, but nothing helps that healing period um, or helps you to move on in your life until you receive a message that that person you've never met before knows nothing about well, you. And you spoke to a friend who we'll call John, who yep. uh, he can do, through Litz yes. who's here, the, you're a yes. medium Litz, yes, uh, and, and, and John could only, it could only have been John. It could only have been um, John, yeah. That wasn't a one-to-one -one because you can, you can bring up the argument that on a one-to-one -one yeah. there could be body language um, or there could be, you know, people say reading minds or something like that. But um, on this occasion it was at a demonstration at Stepping Stones. There was an audience of people and I was sat right at the back. I wasn't expecting a message. Uh, it, I mean, Lloyd, you're clearly you believe in life after death because you're a Pentecostal minister. Who, who's speaking to Sharon here then? Well, I... I... It's what's not your, her what's your I suspicion? wouldn't say it's her relatives, unfortunately. Who is it then? Um, well, let's put it this way. There are angels, there are demons, there are um, beings that we do not know. She's been conned by... I would say so. By devils. I would say so. I would say that the, the fact that she's in an open room, in an open environment, and um, something selected her does not necessarily say it's her relative at all because these these beings will have knowledge of what's going on around and they can select anyone and they can work and they will work through a host and that's Wh what the mediums will, will do. Yes. Wick wicked beings. Yes, I actually believe that what uh, the gentleman is saying is quite possible but I don't believe that it applies in all cases. What happens when you get messages then? 
Do you feel yourself physically changing? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I become aware that uh, my physical form changes, that I am impressed with perhaps passing conditions or immobility, which the person would have felt things that are, are not, uh, not known to me in a physical condition. Um, I see clairvoyantly images of people. Um, I hear names. I see dates. And do you feel yourself physically changing? If it's a man, you feel a beard or anything like that? You feel yourself being yes, tall? Yes, I can do. I physically feel that I have grown, um, that my form has expanded or indeed conversely shrunk. How extraordinary. Could, are you see, would you feel anything now? Are you seeing anything now at the moment? No, it's not something I want to do um, when, I'm, when I'm not in the environment and I'm not wanting to work. Mm. Uh, fortunately, it's something that I can shut off. Mm. OK, gentleman over here, hand went up, then we'll come to our panel. Uh, yeah, I'm an ordinary on. lay person, I'm not a sceptic, I'm not a sceptic whatsoever. I do honestly believe life after death. I don't think we're here for what you would call for four score years and ten, and that's it. I think we have a four path. Four score years and ten? Well, 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 we, have a, yeah. we have a path which we're going, yeah, yeah. but what I want to say is I had an experience a few years ago, and I, my wife isn't well aware of this, is where I, my stepmother, my father and my stepfather came back to me in which my mother said to me, stepmother said to me, I'm sorry I was a bad stepmother to both you and your brother and I, I'm sorry and I said to her, I forgive you and that stays with me and I'm hoping to be able to see her in a future life to say thank you for coming back and saying what you did do. Well, that, well do you think that Yana's been alive by Brian, do you think there's anything in this? I hope so. I really hope. You know, it, a part of me really wishes for this. Why? Because I can't bear the thought that when you go into this hole or you're on a, on a pyre, that's it. What? I just can't bear it. But what's it, wrong with the thought that this well, is Well, maybe, it? but I can't bear it. I can't bear the thought of that most being people, the end. Most people, most people are can't stand the idea. I mean, come on, the world is going to go on without me? Excuse me. No, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm the, very important. The, the it is about... Uh, if this feeling that it can't be just the, all it's about. And it's not even a particularly religious feeling, though I am religious. So I hope you succeed in saying, I mean, I so want to meet a ghost. I would not be scared if I met a ghost, as long as it didn't bit, bite into my neck or anything. You believe in um, ghosts? <laughs> uh, and I think it's the human thing that you want some continuation. But what about, and what, some, what about some giving some everything, kind of Yasmin, to the here and now? Giving everything to, you know, nothing to kill yeah, or die for, all that. I don't stop living that. here and now, but I lost my mother three years ago, and the one thing that I want, really want, and this may sound mad, I just want her to come to me in a dream. I'm going to get all tearful, and she still hasn't. I feel, uh, you know, it's just that longing. Well, would you be tempted with, with it lit, the medium? No, and I, I would not, not, because I feel, I have watched some media, I mean, I'm not saying this is you, but there are so many charlatans out there mm. cashing on on this longing that I've expressed, yeah. and I feel very, very uh, kind of upset on behalf of other people, which is not to say that you, your experience is not valid, but there is this terror, you, know, you see them and you think you're just cashing in on this terrible vulnerability that we all feel, mm. so I, I'm, I'm very sceptical on that. Absolutely, I completely agree and I just think there's such a massive responsibility that goes with this work. To me it's about healing people and it's about allowing closure and it's about allowing people to continue with their life rather than trying and hoping and waiting and wanting to hear from their deceased friend or relative or loved one. It's about being able to move on. Peter Tatchell. Yeah, I accept that there are aspects of the mind that we do not yet understand. I it's think what the mental, doctor's talking mental about. Mental science is at a very, very primitive stage. Yes. And I've had an out-of-body experience. I've also had a near-death experience where I saw the white light and my whole life flashed before me. But I don't think that's evidence of life after death. I think it's the evidence of you know, some extraordinary mental processes taking place yeah. in very stressful, exceptional circumstances. And I think that's the way to look at it. I think, you know, you know, just because people do have these unusual experiences, that is not a reason to conclude that there is life after death. Christina, so many people do talk about it. The doctor yeah, will well, tell I would you. The, the, say that, the um, tunnel, the, the light at the yeah, end of the tunnel, it's all, people beckon, beckoning yeah. them. I've heard experiences like that as well. But I, I would want to say that not only do I believe in life after death, I believe in life before life. 
and, and I think what we're experiencing now on planet Earth is just part of our, our entire experience because I do believe we are spiritual beings as well as physical beings and to me life is so mysterious and, yeah, thank you. and um, so we're learning so much more about it you know we know that our universe is still expanding and we live on this tiny dot in a little solar system in a small galaxy so I, I think life being existing is a great adventure and I have no idea, like, like um, Yasmin, I hope we Do go you on want, and on. Is it, is it for you wanting to encounter and speak to, touch, feel and love loved ones that you have lost before? Do you, do you find that I, a I big part of this? I think when we leave this life, I think we also leave the dimensions of space and time. Don't ask me how that works. I how cannot does that imagine work? it. I, no, 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 I can't. Say is, yes, I, I will. I believe I will be in the closer <laughs> presence of God okay. immediately, and all those who. My who goodness, love me my and goodness, love, me. This is wonderfully profound for a Sunday morning, Jamie. I mean, if if we are a philosopher, if we were to meet in in the in the afterlife, would you be surprised? I'd be very surprised. <laughs> uh, there's a pretense that there's a lot more uh, of wide-scale ignorance here, which we don't really have. I mean, so for example, we do understand quite a lot about how the mind works, and. It's, for example, we understand vision. We know how vision works. Vision is light, uh, light uh, waves hit your eyes, and then there are certain processes, and that's how you see things. Now, how, you know, the idea that we can see when detached from our eyes, I mean, I, I could pluck your eyes out now, and I'm sure you wouldn't see. Well, not for long. Well, they, uh, they tried it in the rugby last week, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're not in a state of ignorance of the kind yeah. of people are here suggesting. And what's, being, what's going on roughly is that people, for are a bit confused by some experiences they have. They take their personal experiences to be of frightful importance, and they ask us to revise our entire worldview, mm. which is based on centuries of built-up evidence about how the world works, and posit mm. fantastical entities. I mean, it's... it's uh, People looking childish. down on their operations. I think so. so, so hang on, so, well, Wendy, Sam. I'm so sorry, can I just... A couple of quick points to say. First of all, actually, we know very little about how the mind comes to be, as you, as you know. We don't know how brain processes lead to your thoughts. So if you think about it, at the end of the 19th century, physicists honestly believed that they had discovered everything that they knew about physics at yeah. that time. Until they discovered the atom, and they realized that Newtonian physics did not answer the questions of the subatomic world, the really, really small world below atoms. So we're still in the foothills. So today, we don't know how thoughts come to be. No, nobody is saying that we know everything about the brain. What we're, what we're questioning is the claim that near-death experiences are evidence of life after death. There, is, there are two different things. You can have a near-death experience and still not have it be li evidence of life after death. And I don't think there's any very good if way of establishing for sure. This, if you see the way I described this, it was very specific that people have died. We have a lot of evidence. Anyone's welcome to search the medical literature that tells us there is a flat line state in the brain. There is no brain activity. There's no blood flow into the brain. And yet something's but going on. If there's one, hold on. I, so, I'm I so sorry. Let me just finish my point, if I may. Just make my point. So the point is, People claim, I don't say they're right or wrong, people claim, and as doctors we have to listen to our patients, they claim they can see us, and they describe incredible